Let's start with a meditation. So if you're in a place where it's appropriate for you to do so, go ahead and close your eyes. Take some slow, deep, relaxing breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. With every inhale, feel more peace entering your body and mind. With every exhale, feel like you're able to let go of every bit of tension and anything you do not want. Inhaling light and peace and just dropping tension in anything you do not want. Just letting gravity take it. We picture ourselves on top of a beautiful mountain in the center of a circular grove of trees. In the center of this circle, a bonfire is blazing forth, lighting us and the grove up with a sacred golden light. We recognize that this is the light of perfect love and perfect trust. Into the sacred space, we invite the presence of our Creator. To many of us, this Creator reveals themselves as a God and Goddess, a Father and Mother. We dedicate the time that we are spending together to them, and then also to our teachers and angels whom we also invite into this space. We ask that we be guided and led as we walk upon the way, becoming happier, more successful, more peaceful, more prosperous, more healthy, and more loving people. Thank you very much. Together we say, blessed be. All right, today I want to go real practical. Uh, many of you have taken a witch's primer, and that's an 18-week course in basic non-denominational witchcraft. And I developed that course in order for people to be able to learn to practice the craft and not have to tie themselves to a tradition or to a, a group necessarily. So when you take that 18 weeks, you get skills and you build a, a power base so that you're capable of performing magic with verifiable, repeatable results. And then you can take that skill set and do anything you want with it. You're not beholden to anybody but yourself. And so that's the purpose of a witch's primer. And so a lot of people think of a witch's primer as being very basic and beginning. And in a lot of ways it is, but, but many of those concepts are, are somewhat intermediate as well. But I do want to take one of those concepts and, and expand on it just a little bit. Now, whether or not you've taken a witch's primer, you can use what we're going to talk about today. I want to discuss the building of a thought form. And before we get into the nuts and bolts of how I want to describe that, let's just talk about the causal plane for a moment. The realm of cause is invisible, and the realm of effect is visible. So everything that we experience in the physical world is a result of an invisible cause. And that's a very hermetic understanding of how things work. If you look onto the world, things that you can see with your eyes or feel with your, your hands, the world of form already happened. It's, it's a thing of the past. It's not being caused. It has been caused. So everything that's not yet formed is malleable. And it's, uh, we, we have the opportunity to, to be creative as to what we, what, what we experience in the physical world. We, that's magic. We have the ability to create things, experiences, objects. Now, the way that they manifest is very natural when we work magic. A lot of people expect, you know, lightning bolts and puff of smoke like in the movies. And that's not how magic works. Magic doesn't work supernaturally. Magic works naturally. <laughs> magic is not a supernatural study. Ma magic is the study of nature and how nature works. And the thing is, is that a lot of people think that nature works based on what they study in the physical realm. But nature actually works in the invisible realm. What is in the visible realm has already occurred. It's We would almost say it is the world of the past. You can't see anything in this world. You can't experience anything in the physical world that is in the present moment, because the present moment is unmanifest. So, when we start working with 
the causal plane, that is the perspective of the invisible world wherein things are caused. When we start working on the causal plane, then we realize that we have a lot more power to affect change than we thought. And we also come to realize that we're always working on the causal plane and that we're always responsible, at least to some degree, for the manifestations in our lives. Now, that's not to say that you're responsible if you get sick. It's not to blame yourself if you have negative ex- circumstances. It's none of that. We're just talking about how the, the invisible mind is responsible for visible experiences. Now, there are a lot of reasons from a hermetic or metaphysical point of view, why things occur the way they do. And sometimes those things do seem very out of our control. For instance, a lot of what we experience in the physical realm that comes from the causal plane comes from the causal plane of a group mind, either a familial mind, a small, uh, like a group mind in the family, a, the group mind of, a, of, a, of an organization, the group mind of a community, and then the group mind of an, an entire species. So a lot of times it seems difficult, if not impossible, to overcome certain thought forms within the group mind. And that's why we talk about working within your sphere of influence. There are certain areas of your life that you have a lot of control over right now and that you are creating. Many of those things uh, are, are easily changed by you. And you don't even realize it because you don't understand that you are creating a lot of those things or most of those things with your mind. But some of the things that you're that you are creating with your mind, you're not creating with your mind as a as a separate ego. You're creating with the mind of a larger group, and those things can sometimes be much more challenging and s- seemingly impossible to overcome. And that's again why we work within our sphere of influence. And you can listen to some of my talks on the sphere of influence if you want to get more understanding of what that means. But just suffice to say that today we're talking about working on things in your life that you do have influence over, things that are already in your sphere of influence. And your sphere of influence is a lot bigger than you might believe. When you are working magic, you are basically taking control of a function of mind that you're already using, but you're using it unconsciously. So let's say that again. In magic, we are consciously taking charge of a function within the mind that we're already using unconsciously. In other words, many of the things that we are responsible for in our lives are there because we have unconsciously had them occur for us. We have unconsciously created thought forms, and now that now we are interacting with the physical counterparts of those thought forms. So trying to change the result of those thought forms is not the way to go. We go and we try to change the thought forms so that those manifestations will change. And one way to build those thought forms is described very clearly in a witch's primer. Now, I want to talk about another way of building a thought form. Usually when people talk about manifestation, which is what we call magic, you hear things like using affirmations or incantations or rituals. But very commonly, all of those things include something called visualization, And that means that you, uh, many times we take a, like what we teach is you take a small little visual loop in your mind of some sort of occurrence that you're conjuring that prove to your deep mind that your desire has taken place. For instance, if you're wanting to sell a house, you might see a loop in your mind of you receiving the check, or you shaking the realtor's hands, or you taking the for sale sign down off of the front of the home. If it's a contract that you wanted to get signed, again, you might see a little loop of you signing the contract or shaking the hands of the person that you're trying to have the agreement with. So those are visualizations, and they work beautifully. But sometimes people don't seem to get the results that they want with the visualizations. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So another way of handling those visualizations is not to visualize what you want, but to visualize what you want as abstract energy. 
So instead of seeing the loop of you shaking the hand of your realtor, you ask yourself, what does selling my house look like as energy? What does it look like? And you just allow yourself to to interact with that as if it was already an entity and you ask it, what, it, what selling my house, having my house sold, what do you look like as energy? Oh, it looks like a misty blue light. How interesting. And then you start playing with that energy and you start making it more beautiful. You start adding shapes and patterns and playing with the colors. Maybe you add a little glitter here and there and you, st- and you just stay with this abstract idea of selling your house or whatever your goal happens to be. And you work on it as energy. And you don't even have to be super formalized about it. Like we do in a witch's primer, we usually condense that thought form into like an energy ball and send it on its way. That's fine to do. But for this, sometimes it's good to just not do that. It's to just allow the the pattern of what it is that you want to tell you what it looks like as energy and to show you how it lives on the on the causal plane. And when you do that, you're kind of taking yourself out of the responsibility of having to take care of the thought form. And you're allowing that thought form to reveal itself to you. And this can have some very profound and very quick results for you. Especially if you've been trying to work on something and it hasn't, you haven't really been able to get the manifestations that you want. Working on it in the abstract, working on it as, as energy, and ha- working on it from more of a listening perspective rather than a telling perspective, rather than me conjuring the, the image, rather than me conjuring the thought form, rather than me conjuring an energy ball, and rather than me directing the energy to a certain place, I'm going to come at it from a whole different point of view. I'm going to assume that that occurrence is already there. I'm going to assume that it's already there, and I'm going to ask the occurrence, ask whatever it is my my desire, I'm going to ask it what it looks like. I'm going to ask it what it feels like. I'm going to ask it to reveal itself as abstract energy that I can play with, and then I can co-create with that energy. That energy and I can start to have a rapport, a relationship, symbiosis, and I can give it some more beauty, and then it can answer me back with some more beauty, and back and forth and back and forth. And we start to build a relationship. That thought form has its own infrastructure that then can be established and manifest. This point of view is very important because then you're realizing that if you have a desire for something, it already exists on the causal plane as possibility. It's already there as possibility, just like everything is already there as possibility. And and you're not creating something out of nothing this way. You're just searching for what already exists. You're searching for how it exists as possibility. Because if you were able to conceive it to begin with, it already exists on the, on the thought plane. If you were already able to conceive of that desire for whatever it is, it was already there as pure possibility. Now you're just meeting it. You're meeting it on the causal plane and you're, dis- and you're developing a relationship with it. And you're developing a relationship with it in the abstract when you can develop a relationship within the abstract, then when it starts to reveal itself in physical form, it may or may not look like what you think it should look like, but it's okay because you've already established the rapport with it. So it doesn't need to look like a certain thing because you'll know it when it comes because you have built this relationship with this energy already. You've already built the relationship with this occurrence. So it could be anything. It could be anything that you want, whatever it is that you want. The first prerequisite for all magic is that you really do have to want it. If you don't, if you don't have desire, if you don't have real desire for it, it's not, there's no way that you're going to be able to, uh, to manifest it. But if you do desire it, then the next step is to get yourself in a nice, relaxed frame of mind and body and just ask for it to reveal itself to you. You can give it a name, or you can ask even better, ask for its name. You can 
ask if it has a sound. Obviously, you can ask if it has a color or what colors are there. Does it have a smell? Does it have a taste? How does it exist on the causal plane? And as it reveals itself to you, you can then, like we said, respond to it by giving your additions to the energy. By saying, yeah, but what about a a nice little swirl over here? What about if we put some purple over here? Maybe we could we could add the smell of roses. How about the smell of roses? And then it'll, it'll respond back to you with, with something. And then you'll respond back to it with something. And you start to build this, this energy conversation with this thought form. Now, that is a living, breathing entity, even before you start to work with it. So now, rather than you saying, I have to build a thought form out of whole cloth, you're saying, I wonder how the thought form already exists on the causal plane, and how can I build a rapport with it so that we can get it to manifest, right? And so you and that thought form become very good friends. You become very, very closely related to one another. So rather than it being some sort of idea and some sort of vacant hope that you just have to like throw a bunch of visualization at and throw a bunch of energy at and you cast it out into the into the physical realm and keep feeding it and feeding it and feeding it, what you have instead, and not that those things are bad, those are very legitimate ways of building thought forms. But from this point of view, none of that really matters because it's already there. It already does exist. It's just that you and it haven't started becoming acquainted with one another yet. You haven't built a relationship. And as you're building the relationship, it's changing. And you're changing. And you're coming together. And you're becoming one. And it becomes so exciting. And this is such an amazing way to start to have things showing up in your life in in very quick ways, very efficient ways, and oftentimes in very miraculous ways. And it it helps us also when we work in this manner to not be so confined by our preconceptions of what something's going to look like. Right? So say you had a a desire to increase your your sales by you know, maybe 20% over the next few months. I mean, you had some, some cost of living increases and stuff like that, and you really wanted to raise your income. Well, rather than visualizing the people and visualizing the this and visualizing the that and coming up with everything all on your own, you could instead say, okay, I'm going to establish a trance. I'm going to relax my body, relax my mind, and I'm just going to call out for that thing. I'm going to just say... Uh, increase of 20%, increase of, <laughs> increase of income of 20%, I want, I want to talk to you. I want to see you. I want to build a relationship with you. And you just sit there for a minute and let it reveal itself to you. And as it reveals itself to you, you ask it what it needs from you, what you could do in order to help it, it along. You start to tell it the kinds of things that you that you think you want, and you let it respond back to you. You start to add energy to it by by changing some of the light, by changing some of the patterns, seeing where there there could be more beauty in that thought form, and then it responds back to you. And like we said, you can you can uh, incorporate color, you can incorporate shape, you can incorporate scent, you can incorporate all kinds of things into this thought form. But you're not so much conjuring it; you're co-creating with it. You're working with it as an already established form, as an already established form. It already exists there, or you wouldn't have thought about it to begin with. It's already got. Uh, a seed of manifestation available to it, but it's just been sitting there dormant. And so now you're just going to start to to play with it and start to wake it up and start to build a relationship with it. And that way, by the time it manifests, you you are both already very, very friendly to each other. You'll know it when you see it because you'll have built that rapport. This is a wonderful tool, and you can use it for all kinds of things. Like say you say you're writing a new book, or say that maybe you're a, a musician and you're and you're uh, wanting to release a new single or release a new album. You could find out what that thing looks like already on the on the causal plane. And ask it and play around with that energy, and notice how much m- more easily 
things manifest in regards to, you know, getting getting your single released or your album released or getting your book released or getting whatever it is that you're doing by working with it on this level rather than necessarily really focusing on your will so much. You're you're now you're moving out of my will, my will, my will and more into our relationship, my relationship with this thing. And building that relationship is like building any other relationship. You just work at it little by little every single day. And you'll know when it's enough. You'll know when it's enough. And you can even ask it, do we need to meet some more? Do we need to meet some more? Are you ready to manifest? And it'll tell you, no, no, I think we're good. I'm gonna I'm gonna go do my thing now. You know, you don't you, you don't have to feel like you're you're it's like you and your project and, and you're the cause of everything. Instead, you and your project are becoming partners. I'm going to do a meditation of this process, a guided meditation, and hopefully this uh, will get released by the time this lecture gets put up. But it's a very, very effective, very profound way of working magic and building thought forms. And I hope that it's something that you find very effective as well. And I really appreciate you spending a little time with me today. And until next time, much love and many, many blessings. Blessings.